Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. It is Wednesday. It is Wednesday, 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 April the 3rd. And we are so excited and so grateful to be together again for Bible study. We have our minister, Amber, this evening, who is going to be bringing forth uh, a, a, a mighty, mighty teaching this evening. God is going to use her in a mighty way, as he always does. And we are so glad that you have joined us this evening uh, for Bible study. Bible study is a time of edification. It's a time to dive into God's word for a deeper understanding so that we can take his word and apply it to our lives as we go out into um, um, into, into, into the world, right? Into the world, into the world. So we are so glad that you have joined us. And on beha- so on behalf of our senior leaders, Apostle Martina Mitchell and Pastor Kenneth Mitchell and our ministerial staff, I'd like to welcome you to House Church Nation. If this is your first time here, we are honored that you have chosen to join us. For Bible study this evening, um, we are streaming live via Facebook and YouTube. So if you are joining us on Facebook, like, share, and tag five people. Have them come on in and get this teaching tonight. If you are joining us via YouTube, we want you to like, we want you to subscribe, and we also want you to tell, turn on those bell notifications so when we go live for Sunday worship service or for a Bible study that you get those notifications and that you can join us for our gathering. So here at House Church Nation, we are a place where everybody is somebody and everyone is a gift. So God bless you. Thank you for being here this evening. Just really quick, I want to say good evening to our minister Nikita. Minister Nikita, she is on with us this evening. I want to say good evening to you. Good evening to you, woman of God. Let us go before God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, sovereign ruler, gracious Lord, Father, we come before you this evening just thanking you, thanking you for this day, thanking you for this hour, thanking you for this moment, Father, thanking you for the woman of God that that is on assignment tonight, that is going to help walk us through your scripture, that is going to help break down the scripture, Father, that is going to help uh, 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 have a, help us dive deep into having a better understanding of your word, Father. And Father, we just we just give you praise as we gather this evening, Father, and, and the purpose for our gathering, Father. And Father, we just ask that you would reset our agendas, Father, as reset our agendas, Father, as we sit in your presence, Father. We invite you in this evening, Father, and just and, 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 and to go from heart to heart and breast to breast, Father. Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit would have their way this evening, Father. And Father, we just thank you. We thank you for brand new mercies, Father. We thank you for a fresh anointing, Father. We're grateful for this evening that we have, and we have come before you, Father, with expectancy in our hearts, Father. Father, for you assure us that where two or three are gathered in your name, Father, we are in the midst. And Father, we just thank you, Father. Father, we come before you uh, asking that you help us to recalibrate our intentions, Father, and refocus our hearts, Father, for when so when we are off track, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we're stepping aside and fully surrendering and fully surrendering, Father, to allow to to allow your will to be done, Father. Our plans don't always reflect your will for our lives, Father. And Father, we 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 want your will to be done in our lives, Father. So change our change our mindsets, Father, to re, to reflect your will, Father. Help us to understand that if, that that we don't need full clarity to walk in the unique purpose, Father, that you have laid out for our lives, Father. We just need you, Father. Lift our eyes to seek you, Father, first and always in everything that we do, Father, surrendering our need to achieve, understand, and be known, Father. Shift our perspectives, Father, to seek your peace above all else, Father, to seek your guidance above all else, Father, to seek your strategy above all else, Father, in everything, Father, we ponder in our daily lives. Father, let the Holy Spirit translate your commands, Father, open our minds and our hearts and our ears, Father, so that we can hear to how you are guiding us, Father, renew our strengths, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus and our godly courage to obey you without questioning, Father, and forgive us for be, for striving beyond our means, Father, worrying, Father, and forcing results, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gift of community, Father, and this opportunity to come together, Father, 
to 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 learn more, but to get a deeper understanding of your word, Father. Uh, and we are thank you for every opportunity, Father, that we're able to come together, Father. Now I pray for a woman of God and Minister Amber, Father, in the name of Jesus. Use her, Father, in a mighty, mighty way this evening, Father. Father, let the words of her mouth, Father, and the meditation of her heart, Father, be acceptable in your sight, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. We pray that that you would increase, Father, as she decreases, Father, and we pray that you would open her mouth, Father as your servant, Father, in the name of Jesus, as she's proclaiming your word, Father, and the power of your spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, that that same spirit, that that the, that the hearts of the hearers, Father, would have that same spirit, Father, and be able to receive the words that she's given, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. We just, we, we give this entire Bible study to you, Father, and ask that you would just lead us and guide us, Father, and have your way. And it is in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for so much for joining us this evening. I want to just say good evening to our sister Jasmine. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. And I'm just going to jump into announcements really quick and then get out of your way so that I can turn so that you can hear from uh the woman of God this evening. So, first, I want to just say thank you again for joining us for worship for Wednesday Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Also, you can join us every Sunday uh, at 11 a.m. for worship service, and we we live stream our services uh, via Facebook and via YouTube. So thank you so much. So thank you for joining us tonight. You can also join us. Uh, you can also join us every Sunday for worship service. Also, I'd like to. Uh, uh, talk about Monday Moments with Martina Mitchell, our apostle. Listen, the Monday Moments is we are we're in the prayer intensive edition of Monday Moments with Martina Mitchell. Um, and the the our woman of God, she has had um, uh, starting March 11, we've had several speakers, our guest speakers that have that are going to be joining us for prayer intensive to give us a sneak peek into what God has been downloading into them. And we're going to continue this every week leading up to prayer intensive. So, uh, so this upcoming Monday, um, next, this up next Monday, April the 8th, we're going to have with us a uh, prophet Dion Brown. And then on April 15th, we're going to have apostle Michelle Harding. April 22nd, we're going to have apostle Kendra Carpanita. April 29th, we're going to have Apostle Dr. Sheldon Hudson. And then on May 6th, which is the week of the, which is the Monday before prayer intensive, we are going to have uh, Apostle Aaron J. Mobley with us. So you don't want to, you don't want to miss it. Turn on them notifications. Join us every Monday at 5.30. Join Apostle every Monday at 5.30 uh, for Monday Moments with Martina Mitchell, the prayer intensive edition. Also, how many of you know that uh, vitamins are a are, are needed for our body? And we have uh, an our apostle. She gives us spiritual vitamins in many different formats, um, including through books. She she is an author and she has three books that you can pre order. They are Surviving Hardship, 31 Days of Practical Tools for Overcoming, Healing God's Way and the Art of Being a Wife. So that's Surviving Hardship. 31 Days of Practical Tools for Overcoming, Healing God's Way, and the Art of Being a Wife. Each of these uh, books cost $20. They can be pre-ordered via Cash App at dollar sign Martina Mitchell, or you can pre-order them online at www.intouchwiththekingdom.com. Again, that is www.intouchwiththekingdom.com. So can everybody say Prayer Intensive 2024? Prayer intensive 2024 is sold out. But let me just but let me just let me take it back. Let me take you back to our minister Amber. Although that prayer intensive, the, the venue is out of beds and the venue is closed, prayer intensive is still open. Okay. And so you can join us by purchasing purchasing a day pass for Saturday for for uh, 125. And that's going to include all of your meals for the day. Uh for, that your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner. It's also going to include your um, all your conference materials. Now, if you want to, um, if you want to stay for the weekend, 
there are several hotels that are close by that in fact our our minister amber has them up on her facebook page um that you can go and um you know book a room that is that are no more than that are no more than like 15 minutes away from the venue that will allow you to come on friday because friday is free we'll offer it it will also you know allow you to be there for our sunday morning worship service but then your day pass will allow you uh to attend for the saturday all day and that will include your meals and your um and your conference materials. So you want to go ahead and get your uh you want to go ahead and get your your day pass. We have some phenomenal uh men and women of God that are going to be joining us for prayer intensive. We have Apostle Dr. Kendra Carpenita from Pensacola, Florida, Apostle Michelle Harding from Eastern Maryland, Apostle Dr. Sheldon Hudson from Knoxville, Tennessee, Apostle Aaron J. Mobley from Charleston, South Carolina. Prophet Dion Brown from Atlanta, Georgia. And we also are going to have Prophet Sharia Gross from Philadelphia and Minister Tisha Dunn from Philadelphia. So we would love to have you join us for prayer intensive. So don't forget to, you know, go log on and get and get your day passes. So that is all the announcements that we have for this evening. I thank you for your uh, for your attention and your time. I want to uh, say good evening for everyone who has come in that I didn't have an opportunity to greet be, uh, beforehand. And now I'm going to turn this this service, this Bible study over to our very own Minister Amber. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, before we even get started, because <clears throat> I want to give us time to go through the lesson tonight, I just want to uh, start with prayer. And so, Father, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for this opportunity to fellowship. Thank you for this opportunity to hear your voice. Thank you for this opportunity, Father. I pray for everyone right now where they are, God. I ask that you would allow each person to ex experience their own worship and their own praise, Father. Allow their hearts to worship and praise you right where, they're, where they are, Father. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, for being good. We thank you, God, for being faithful. We acknowledge your hand on our lives. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your spirit. Father, we acknowledge your greatness. Father, we thank you, God, that you didn't leave us, but you leave us by ourselves, but you left us with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. I, I ask that each one of you just welcome the Holy Spirit where you are. Holy Spirit, you are welcome where we are. You are welcome in this Bible study. Lord, I ask that you would hide me, hide me in this word, God. Decrease me so that you might increase. Speak to us tonight, God. Heal us tonight, God. Deliver us tonight, God. Show up on tonight, God. We are depending on you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Your word says that those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So, Lord, fill us tonight. Meet us tonight. Hallelujah. Father, we don't take this moment and this time for granted. We don't rush out of your presence. We don't rush out of prayer, but we just say thank you. And we just give you glory for how good you have been, how great that you are, Father. We thank you, God, that you loved us and chose us in spite of everything, Father. We thank you that you love us beyond our faults. We thank you, God, for your perfect love. Show us and teach us on tonight about your love and your heart to for your people. Lord, I thank you that you've given us this word, this Bible, that's sharper than any two-edged two sword. Make this word live for us. Give us our daily bread, God. We come boldly to your throne of grace. We thank you for your rhema word. We thank you for feeding us and supplying all of our needs according to your riches and glory. We thank you, Father, that we have everything that we need. We thank you, God, that your word will accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your promises, which are yes and amen. We thank you for the rest of the Lord. As we take off our days, as we get ready to prepare to seek your face, Father, to seek your face another day, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you. And we just take time to commune with you in prayer. We thank you for your word. And Lord, we ask right now that you would give each, of, each and every one of us what we need. Thank you. We love you. We honor you. And we magnify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. <sighs> so tonight's topic is love. 
And I couldn't think of a better topic to start off a beautiful month. So the first scripture I am going to start with is Ephesians 1. I'm going to be in the New Living Translation. Yeah, the New Living Translation. I'm going to start at verse 4. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to plan. Thank you, Lord. And so I started with this scripture because I want us to get in our spirits, to get in our minds, to get in our hearts that before the world began, God chose us. We can't really comprehend that because sometimes we think when we say before the world began, we think before we were born. But before not only we were born and our parents are born and our great grandparents were born. But back until our oldest ancestor and then some before the world began, God chose us. And he loved us. His love is ancient. His love encompasses all that we have today. His love misses nothing. And he chose us in Christ to be holy. And so I want to go back to um, the Old Testament. Because one of the things that I realized and that God is showing me about this particular, this Bible, is that, you know, we have an Old Testament and we have a New Testament. And oftentimes, um, we believers and reading our scriptures, sometimes we struggle to connect um, the Old Testament to the New Testament, right? So I have my, I have my word with me. And the, the vision that I got from God was, was, as I was even ministering and teaching and studying the word, it is finished. He showed me that usually you think it is finished. It's the last page of the book. But because God is the Alpha and the Omega, God brought the beginning and the end together. He closed the book. You understand? So he brought the New Testament and the Old Testament together. Jesus always was. He is the beginning and the end. And so I want to go to Deuteronomy chapter five. We're going to the Ten Commandments. And I got some good, good, good stuff today when I was studying, but this is something I thought was interesting. I'm going to start um, with verse one and go down to verse 10. Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, Israel, listen to the statutes and ordinance I am pro proclaiming as you hear them today. Learn and follow them carefully. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. He did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with all of us who are alive here today. The Lord spoke to you face to face from the fire on the mountain. At that time, I was standing between the Lord and you to report the, to, to report the word of the Lord to you. Because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up to the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the place of slavery. 
Do not have any other gods besides me. Do not make an idol for yourself in the shape of anything in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. Do not bow and worship to them and do not serve them because I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the father's iniquity to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me but showing faithful love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commands. I want my message today and my title of my message today. I normally don't have titles, but it's a, it's a message and it's a call. Don't be afraid of the fire. And as I was reading this in verse, what is that? Verse five. I see where Moses had to stand between the people and God because they were afraid of the fire. And because they didn't go up the mountaintop, Moses had to tell them what was going on. Now, these are God's people. These are not Gentiles. These are Jews. These are people who should have a relationship with him. These are people who should desire to be in close proximity to him. These are people who claim to honor him and know him, yet they are afraid. They are afraid to go up the mountain because they are afraid of the fire of God. And so you can go down and look through this chapter, but when we get to verse 22, the Lord spoke these commands in a loud voice to your entire assembly from the fire, cloud, and total darkness on the mountain. He added nothing more. He wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. All of you approached me with your tribal leaders and elders when you heard the voice from the darkness and while the mountain was blazing with fire. You said, look, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness and we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that God speaks with a person, yet he still lives. Talking about Moses. <laughs> but now, why should we die? This great fire will consume us. And we will die if we hear the voice of the Lord, our God, any longer. For who out of all man mankind has heard the voice of the living God speaking from fire as we have and lived? Go near and listen to everything the Lord our God says. And then you can tell us everything the Lord our God tells you. And we will listen and obey. The Lord heard your words when you spoke to me. He said to me, I have heard the words that these people have spoken to you. Everything they have said is right. If only they had such a heart to fear me and keep all my commandments or all my commands always so that they and their children would prosper forever. Go and tell them, return to your tents. But you, stand here with me and I will tell you every command, the statutes and ordinances that you are to teach them so that they may follow them in the land I am giving them to possess. So he is giving them commandments to take into the promised land. Be careful, this is a warning, to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. God gives warnings to people. He gives us warnings because he loves us and he wants us to maintain our relationship. You are not to turn aside to the right or to the left, but follow the whole instruction. As my apostle says, eat the whole school. The Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live, prosper, and have a long life in the land you will possess. As we go down further, we see, let's go to, yeah, let's just go to the top of verse six. This is the command, the statutes and ordinances the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you so that you may follow them in the land that you are about to enter and possess. Do this so that you may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life by keeping all his statutes and commands I am giving you your son, your grandson, and so that you may have a long life. 
Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Your heart, your soul, and your strength. When we hear this, you understand that he's speaking to their flesh. He's speaking to their heart. He's speaking to them growing weary. He's speaking to their salvation. Love God with everything. These words that I am giving today are to be in your heart. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them be a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your city gates. When I, I think I talked about this a few weeks ago, but understanding that the Ten Commandments was God's instructions for us to have relationship with him. And oftentimes in our immaturity, in the, in our, in, in the beginning of our walk, we feel like there are so many rules to follow. And how can we follow these rules? And it, like, how, how can I, I can't keep up with this. I'm not, I, I, it's too much for me. It's too hard for me. Because we didn't understand that this wasn't a list to a complete, but, but, but more so a list to follow because we are trying to enter and possess the land, possess the promises of the Lord. This is not a, 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 a list for con condemnation purposes, but the truth is that sin entered into the world through the garden. And with everything that we have here, we have these commandments. We have Moses being the prophet who was interceding and talking to the people on behalf of God. And he's going back and forth. But God ultimately wanted the same relationship with the people that he had with Moses. Sorry, guys. My Alexa does this every time I teach. Um so, yes, yeah, so I really wanted to harp on the fact that in this commandment, the, the commandments, the first two commandments are the most important. The people did not go up the mountain. It was only Moses. So this is. This is us. We are afraid to go up the mountain. We are afraid to go into the presence of God. We are fearful of. Our creator, yet we get up every day and we go out into this world. So trusting, we trust the things that are in this world. We get in our cars, we go to the market, we walk down the street, we get into relationships, we make um, covenants and contracts, and yet we're afraid of the presence of the Lord. We're afraid of these things. And so I want to talk to you guys about the perfect love. So we're going to go into Hosea now. So Hosea is a prophet. Um, I'm not going to actually read too much from Hosea, but I want to get into Hosea because it was important for me to, I actually read, that was like one of the chapters that I actually read today when I was studying. I read the entire book and it was basically a book about um, a prophet whom God commanded to marry a prostitute. Hosea, let me see. Hosea's wife, his name was Gomer. Her name was Gomer. And God commanded um, Hosea to marry a prostitute to show the, the promiscuity or the, let me, no, let me just go to it. I'm turning to this chapter now, but we're going to go to Hosea and we're going to talk about um, idolatry. So in chapter three, um, God commands um, Hosea. He says, go again, show love to a woman who was loved by another man and is an adulteress, just as the Lord loves Israel, just as the Lord loves the Israelites through, though they turn to other gods and love raisin cakes. So when we think about, we're going from uh, Deuteronomy to Hosea, but essentially we know it through the Old Testament, the children of Israel couldn't just, they just couldn't seem to get it right. They couldn't fulfill the laws. And so we have this, this text. Um, and it's pretty much like a, like an autobiography 
where Hosea is the main character and he's um he's prophesying and he's talking about God's judgment on Israel and Israel's adultery um the adultery of Israel was actually um idolatry he talks about worshiping Baal he talks about um the earth and uh the new wine and how they were worshiping the things that God gave them dominion over and so we see in here that God his his heart was broken and he wanted Hosea to experience what it was like for him to make a covenant with people who worship other gods so I would definitely say to read Hosea um but I'm going to go to a scripture in Hosea that I thought was very, very interesting because in all of understanding God's love, I had to understand God's judgment. And so I read a scripture and it was in chapter nine, verse 14, where, it's, where the Lord said, um, he said, give them, Lord, what should you give? He said, give them a womb that miscarries and breasts that are dry. And he was talking about the coming exile. And I was just looking and I said, this is one of those texts that makes me question how good God is. Like I really needed to understand this, but when I began to study Hosea, I understood that God disrupts our, he disrupts our behaviors. He disrupts our sin because he loves us so much and he is trying to redirect us back to him. So even in the things that are happening where, where this woman is giving birth to Ill illegitimate children and she's being promiscuous, that God, that God is shown, telling Hosea one to stay with his wife for two, I am, I am loving and I am a disciplining husband. Like he is our husband, he is our bridegroom. And so when we think about God, we have to think about him and begin to understand him as our groom when we are thinking about ourselves as the church. A lot of times it's easy or easier to think about God as father, but to think about him as our groom, that is something that's a little bit more difficult. And when I thought about his love and how a lot of these um, scriptures, they're, they're, it's, it's, it's passion, it's, it's fire, and it makes you really uh, understand the fact that this is a covenant because God is literally... It's 14 chapters of, of, of prophecy and judgment, but it's also him talking about, like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to petition and plead for you to repent. Like, please come back to me. Like he's doing all that he can to um, redeem his bride. And so in the last chapter, I suggest that you guys uh, go through this, but then the last chapter, he said, he promised to um, restore them. He said, I will heal their apostasy. I will freely love them for my angle, anger will have turned from him. I will be like the dew to Israel. He will blossom like the lily and take root like the cedars of Lebanon. His new branches will spread and his splendor will be like the olive tree. He is talking to them with such loving language after all of this judgment and all he's expressing himself. God has feelings, but the love that he gives us is a love that is a, it's a choice. He chose us before then it even entered into the world. He chose us before the foundation of the world. So we understand that sin, even sin couldn't keep us, couldn't, couldn't interrupt God's love because his love is so passionate. He loves us so much. And so some of us, it's hard to feel God's love. It's hard to understand God's love. It's hard to comprehend God's love, God's love because God doesn't love like people. And you want to just read the things that make you comfortable. You want to read the things that make you feel good, that make you shout. But we got to understand that God, God is, God is, is he's, he's, he's jealous for us. That the things that make us feel good are not the, always the things that make us better. Um, when God loves us and he loves us so much and he sees us in our sin, he sees us, um, in our, in our infirmity, he sees us and he sees us choosing things that are beneath us while all the while he has an inheritance, he has healing and he has freedom. 
He would do anything in this world to, to, to get us back to him because this world is very, very temporary. This world, we are living to live again. This world is so temporary. So I want to go over into the New Testament um, because we're talking about a God who wants to be face to face with us. We're talking about a God who wants to love us deeply and intimately. We're talking about a God who lives on the inside of us and surrounds us. So he's not just up there, but he's also, he's, 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 he's where two or more are gathered. And he's also for those who are saved and for those who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he lives on the inside of you for those who receive salvation. God is, he's, he's with us. He's within us and he's all around us. He loves us and there's nothing that we can do about it. And I want to, I want to get more into God's love for us. And so let's go to John chapter three. Um, I talked about John. Um, I talked about John in on Good Friday, actually. I'm going to go to John chapter three, verses 14 through 19. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the son of man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Anyone who believes in him is not condemned, but anyone who does not believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the one and only son of God. We are all familiar with John 3, 16, but I think we're, we're, we need to become familiar with, with the, the love and, the, and the, the love attached to our salvation, that there is literally love, um, on the inside of every word that God has put in our hearts, that there is literally love dripping out of this Bible. We're drenched in his love. We're drenched in his grace because we actually don't deserve any of these things. So I want to give you guys a quick definition before I, um, sh before I shift, because it's important for us to understand what love is as we're talking about love. And as we're talking about the love of God and why is love so important and why is it so hard Let's talk about what love is. Love is unselfish, loyal, and benevolent intention and commitment toward one another. The concept of the love of God is deeply rooted in the Bible. The Hebrew term chased refers to covenant love. Jehovah is the God who remembers and keeps covenants in spite of the treachery of his people. His faithfulness in keeping his promises proves his love for Israel and all of humanity. Another word, Ahava, can be used, um, A-H-A-V-A-H, can be used um, of human love towards oneself or another person of the opposite sex. There is so many different kinds of love. Um, I know some of you are familiar with the word agape, the um, root word agapo is uh, rarely used in Greek, but it's used by believers to talk about the unconditional love of God. Um, and it's used interchangeably with phileo, talking about God the Father's love for Jesus and Jesus' love for his disciple John. When I think about love and I think about why it's so important, I think that we have to understand that love made Jesus get on the cross. Love made Jesus get on the cross, that it wasn't fear, that it wasn't a, um, God wasn't by might, God didn't force Jesus to get on the cross, but, but love made him do it. We had to put ourselves in the mind of, of Christ, the one who, who, who was born of a virgin, the one who was sent from heaven to atone for all of our sins. Love made him get on that cross. And as we understand he is the son of man, we understand the human part, but it is important for us to understand the God part because we operate in that God part just as much as we operate in the human part. 
that we we operate in in humanity we operate in our flesh we operate in and in, in the things that we can see but god is calling us to walk after our spirit but what spirit is that but the spirit of love what spirit is that but the spirit that made jesus get on the cross what spirit are we to walk after and to seek sorry sorry guys that was luke um but just to understand that love is literally a fruit of the spirit and so we have to go into these texts with the mindset that there's something that we might be missing tonight. There's something that we didn't know today, yesterday that we need to know today. There's something that we need to know tomorrow that we got to keep. There's love should make us keep coming back to the word of God. Love made me read the book of Hosea, not understanding why would I need to read this book? Love made me do it because I understood that there was things that God needed to show me about me. There was things that God needed to show me about himself. And there was things that God needed to show me about his people. He is showing us through our studying in our, in our, in our finite understanding that he is infinite, that his love is, is faithful and that he is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is showing that he responds to his people because he desires a relationship and always desire a relationship with his people, not a person, not a prophet, not a pastor, not a teacher, but his people. He died for the world. And so as the body of Christ, as the believers, as the church, as his bride, he is coming back for his bride. He is coming back for his bride. He is coming back for his bride. We are the bride of Christ as his church. Together, we are the bride. So what does that mean? We say things, but what does it mean to be the bride of Christ? What does it mean to, 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 to be, for God to be our groom? He's not yet our husband, right? He's a, he's our he's 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 coming back for us, and when he comes back, then we will consummate. We will consummate our relationship when Jesus comes back. But right now, we are the bride of Christ. we are promised to him. He is coming back for us. So let's go deeper into scripture to to get this image of a bride. Let's let's go deeper to understand. God's passion, God's love, and, and God's affection for us. Let's, let's, let's uncover what's been covered. And, and let's pray that God would help us to, to, to love him better, to love people better, and to love ourselves better because love covers a multitude of sins. It is love that covers a multitude of sins. It is not our good works. It is not it is not our sacrifice, but it is love. And so let us receive more of him on tonight as we uncover what his love means to us. Let's go to John chapter 18. Let's go to John chapter 18. No, John chapter 13. I am going to start with verse one. Before the Passover festi festival, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world to the father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Let's just, I want to get to the next verse, but let's go to verse one again. Because sometimes we have to read things a few times to get it in your spirit, to understand that Jesus was, was both human and man. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come. He knew that it was time for him to be crucified and to leave this world and return to his father. He had loved, this, his, he had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth. Jesus loved them. Jesus loved the people that he did ministry with. 
He loved his, his disciples while he was doing ministry. And now he loved them to the very end. He showed them the full extent of his love. In this next passage, we are going to see the full extent of Jesus' love for his disciples, which is us. It was time for supper and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So what did Jesus know? Jesus knew that he had authority. Jesus knew that it was his decision. Jesus knew that he had a choice. Jesus knew that God was on his side. Jesus knew that God was with him. God was within him, the spirit of the living God. Jesus knew that he had authority over everything. He had authority over those Roman soldiers. He had a authority over those high priests. He had authority over every spirit, every demonic spirit. He had authority over the enemy. He had authority over his flesh. Jesus knew that he had authority. He didn't question, but he knew that. He knew that he had come from God. He knew that he was heaven sent. He knew that he was just journeying. Jesus knew that he was a pilgrim. Jesus knew he didn't get attached to the things of this world, but he loved the people in it enough to show them the full extent of his love. He loved his disciples during his ministry on earth and now he loved them to the end. It was time for supper and the devil the adversary had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. The enemy had already infiltrated the camp through Judas. Judas was still a part of the disciples that Jesus loved. And he was tricked into betraying Jesus. Jesus knew that the father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and returned to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around them. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter, Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never, ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, the, then wash my hands and head as well. Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. And he was referring to Judas. For Judas knew that, for, I mean, for Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me a teacher and Lord, you are right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Because Jesus came to serve. He knew that he came to serve. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master. Nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. In this, in this depiction, Jesus is preparing 
for the cross. But in his final act of love, one of his, the, the, the outside of the cross, his final act of love for his disciples was from washing their feet. He served those that served him. He he cleansed those that 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 walked with him. He he said, "Unless I wash you, you won't belong to me." Another version in the Amplified says, "You will, unless I wash you, you have no part with me." which means we can have nothing to do with each other. So Jesus washed their feet because he wanted to share and he wanted us to share in the example. He gave us an example of how to love one another. This was an act of humility for Jesus. This was, this was an act of, of, of love because he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is our savior. He is the Messiah. He is deliverer, yet he is taking the time to wash their feet. And so when Jesus had washed their feet and put on his outer clothing, he reclined again and said to them, do you know what I have done for you? <laughs> you call me teacher and Lord. He's saying, you call me your teacher. You say it with your mouth and you call me Lord. And you are speaking rightly since that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also are to wash one another's feet. Jesus taught by example. For I have given you an example so that, so that you also should do just as I have done for you. Truly I tell you, a servant is not greater than his master and a messenger not greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. And I'm not speaking about all of you, but I know the ones that I have chosen. And the scripture must be fulfilled. The one who eats my bread has raised his heels against me. Jesus, even in this moment, was fulfilling the word, the prophecy. Because he didn't just wash the other 11 disciples' feet, but he also washed the feet of Judas. He served Judas. He cleansed Judas. I am telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am he. Truly, I tell you, whoever receives anyone I send receives me and the one who receives me receives the one who sent me. And so when we look at this, we understand that Jesus wasn't even mad at Judas. Jesus loved Judas and even until the betrayal, knowing that the enemy, that it was Satan who was using Judas. And now Jesus is predicting his betrayal, but we have to understand even in all that's happening, he still washed his feet. He still washed his feet. Jesus is giving us an example. Let's go to... John 18, chapter 23. I mean, verse 23. I'm going to read actually 19 to 23 so we can get this. But in this text, we're looking at Jesus again after Jesus is betrayed and, and they turn him over to the soldiers. Jesus is talking with the high priest. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus answered him. I have always taught in the synagogue and in the temple where all the Jews congregate. And I haven't spoken anything in secret. Why do you question me? Question those who heard what I told them. Look, they know what I said. When he said these things, one of the officials standing by slapped Jesus saying, is this the way you answer the high priest? If I have spoken wrongly to you, Jesus answered him, give evidence about the wrong. But if rightly, why do you hit me? Then, An then An Annas sent him bound to Cephas, the high priest. In this text, I never realized before he was sent to Pilate, 
he was with the high priest. And when they had a conversation and they were questioning Jesus and they didn't like his response, they smacked him in the face. Can you imagine striking God in the face because you don't like his response? Can you imagine? And, and God, in all of his grace and his mercy and his splendor, giving him a gentle response. God, who, who says vengeance is mine, does not seek vengeance in this moment. But he just gives him a gentle answer. He says, if I have spoken wrongly, give evidence about the wrong, but if rightly, why do you hit me? And they sent him out because what happened was they tried to provoke him. And so let's go into 1 Corinthians 13. We're going to 1 Corinthians 13 and we're going to start with verse 1. And we're going to go down to verse 13. If I speak human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so that I can move mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. And if I give away all my possessions, and if I give over my body, in order to boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. But love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It is not boastful. It is not arrogant. It is not rude or self-seeking. It is not irritable and does not keep a record of wrong. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecy, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know in part and prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought like a child and I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put a aside the childish things. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully as I am known. Now these three, three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And so we see in this text what love is and what love is not. We see in this text that, that the first thing it says is love is patient. Love is patient. And before we even get there, let's even, let's talk about it. It doesn't matter what gifts that you have. It doesn't matter how good you are um, at your job. It doesn't matter what kind of car you drive. It doesn't matter how long your hair is. It doesn't matter what, how many languages you can speak. It doesn't matter if you were the president. It doesn't matter what position you hold. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how, how many hours you've sat in church, how many sermons you've preached, how many people you've laid, you've laid had hands on, if, how many tongues you've spoken in. Because if you don't have love, you're just noisy. You're just a clanging symbol. You can have gifts and you can have understanding and you can even have faith to move mountains. You can have all of these things and still not have love. How fitting to start the month of April off meditating on the love of God, understanding the love of God trying to teach on the love of God, understanding that the word is stands, it stands by itself, that love is patient, that love is kind. It's, it's, it, it, it doesn't envy. This isn't a word to puff us up, but it's a word to make us submit ourselves to God, to fall on our faces and fall to our knees. Help me. This is a, this is a, this is a, 
word that is supposed to crucify that flesh when you're feeling impatient when you're feeling impatient with your children when you're feeling impatient with your spouse when you're feeling impatient with your siblings when you're feeling impatient with god to remind you, yourself that that's crucify that flesh because love is patient the spirit of god living on the inside of me is love and love is patient so let me practice that that when when offenses are coming Love is a reminder to be kind, to not render evil for evil, evil, but to overcome evil with good. Love doesn't boast. It doesn't, it doesn't shout from the rooftops and, 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 and let people know every time you do a good act or a good deed. Love just ex exists. It just does. It's not boastful. It is not arrogant love is humble it is not rude which means love is it's mannerable love is considerate love considers others love considers and esteems others more than ourselves love 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 put christ on the cross and love will put us on our cross love will help us to carry our cross it is not self-seeking it is not irritable and it does not keep a record of wrong. Love does not keep a receipt. Love does love does not keep a list. Love has no memory. <laughs> it keeps no records of wrongs. Because when, when, when God looks at us through the blood of Jesus, he only sees his son. We are the sons of God. And through the lenses of love, through our salvation, it changes how God sees us. And so when God sees us, he does not see sin, but he sees Jesus. And so that's why we worship God through Jesus. And this is why we preach. And this is why we use our gifts. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Love does love isn't love isn't happy. Love isn't um it, we're, we're not happy when lies are being told. We don't because we're we're not trying to get away with anything. Love will make you tell the truth. Love will make you confess. It rejoices in the truth. Love makes you confess the truth. Love makes you tell the person that you hurt you're sorry. Love makes you confess your fears. Love makes you go to the doctors because you don't, you don't want to, you, you, your pride is keeping you from getting well. Love makes you put your pride to the side because you want to live and you want to serve your family. Love makes you Take a shift of a person that you know is tired and exhausted and has work to do at home. Love makes you give. Love, love is, love is, love is power. Love makes you stay up when you want to go to sleep. Love makes you study the word when you want to get on Instagram. It is love. Love makes you apologize. Love. It is love that love. This is this is the motivating force. If it is not love, it is not God. Love is a fruit of the spirit. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. When 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 times get tough, and you get tired, and you feel burdened, step into love, because we are not here for our own selfish gain we are not here for our own purposes but we are here for the purpose of god we are here because because now our lives are not our own we were born again and because we were born again we owe god everything and he doesn't mind he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't get upset about having to remind us because he knows that this flesh is corruptible this is why we fellowship. This is why we do community. This is why we fast and pray. 
because God, God gave us these tools and these resources. This is why we spend time in prayer seeking the face of God, because we need to understand what to do. Because our old, our old ways aren't good. God wants to do a new thing in us. And so sometimes there's a lot of examples in the world, but the thing God wants to do, you can only find that in prayer. You haven't seen it done. You haven't witnessed it before. But Jesus is our great example. And in him is everything that we need. And in him is all of the love, not just for us, but for every person that offends us, there is mercy. Because God sent Jesus to get on that cross. And he obeyed his father unto death. He surrendered his life. He gave himself, all of himself for the entire world. And it covered us. Because and, and because he did that, now we no longer have to sacrifice, but we just have to be obedient. We have to keep the commandments. We have to stop worshiping idols. We have to seek the face of God. He wants to be face to face with us. He's an intimate God. A lot of times our relationships and things in our life are going wrong because God is jealous for us. He desires to be face to face with us. He is, we don't have to wait. As I told you in the beginning in Deuteronomy, when Moses was was uh, was going up the mountain to the to see the, to to commune with God, and God was in the fire, and the people of God were afraid of the fire. They were afraid of the fire, and so they didn't go up the mountain. But He wanted to be face to face with His people, and they were confused. And they said, "How can anybody be face to face with God and live?" God wants to be face to face with us. He wants the communion. He is the head. We are the body. In order for us to understand what we're supposed to be doing, we have to go to him because God is not the author of confusion. And, and sometimes imagine cutting your head off, right? The body, what can the body do without the head? But flail, you know what I mean? We need the direction that comes from the mind. We need, we need uh, the, 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 the clarity we need sight we need hearing we need we need our voices we need everything that comes from the head we need this we need the face of god we need to find his face we need to seek his face not just seeking him but seeking his face god what do you look like in this earth i want to look more like you we should be able to be our image bearers we should be bearing the image of christ each one of us should be bearing the image of christ this is probably why he told us not to to, to, to make um, idols and to not not to uh, not even things that we think are heavenly because he we are supposed to be the image bearers. He doesn't want us to get caught up in in uh, earthly things, but we are the image bearers of Christ, and we are the ones to reflect the love. And He has called us to put aside our childish things. He called us to maturity in him. He called us to, to grow in him, but to grow only in love, not to grow in anger, to grow in resentment, to grow in frustration, to grow in unforgiveness. He's called us to lay aside every offense, to cast every care on him because he cares for us. He's called us to stop trying to do it by ourselves. He's called us to himself because his love is perfect. His love is superior. His love is the love that elevates. His love is the love that promotes. His love is the love that will cause us to prosper. And so we don't have to fear anymore. The, the enemy, he's such a liar. He's such a liar. And a lot of the things we're, we're, we're fighting in our heads right now are, are lies. And so, Father, we thank you that you are the spirit of truth that speaks, that lives. We thank you that in you we have our beings, Father. We thank you for your word that is true, that is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword, sword, Father. Let your, love, your word live in us, Father. We lay aside our offenses. We cast our cares to you right now, God. We, we ask that you would heal us, Father, in the places where we were trying to hide from you, Father. Let your love be like the bomb that's in Gilead, Father. Pour your love out, Father. Because you're so good, Father. You will always give more than we need and more than we ask for, Father. We thank you for your exceedingly abundant and accelerated answers, Father. We thank you that you're already here with us, Father. We glorify your name and we ask that you would help us to love and to know love and to become loved in this earth. As Christ bear his cross, so shall we bear our crosses today, God. Let us not resent the cross, but understanding, Father, that the cross is what gave him the power gave us the power, it gave us the authority. Let us not resent 
what we have to go through because even Jesus submitted to his process. Father, we, we ask God that you would empower us to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh, Father, that this flesh might, might be crucified, Father. We pray, God, and we ask that you would fill us with your Holy Ghost. For those who are thirsting, God, fill them. God, let them not be afraid of your fire any longer, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that you filled us, God, that you've given us water to drink that we might never thirst again. Father God, we thank you and we don't fear the enemy because Satan is defeated. We thank you and we take authority over our minds. We take authority over every thought and we hold that just trying to hold us captive, Father. We thank you that the weapons that formed today did not prosper. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much that you allowed us to make it home today, Father, to make it on Bible study. Father, we may not have what we want, but we have all that we need, Father. And we thank you that blessings and miracles are on the way. We thank you that signs and wonders are following us because of our faith. We thank you that your word is true and that you're not a man that you should lie, Father. Your word says you've never seen the righteous forsaken or your seed begging for bread. We thank you that you've never forsaken us, God, that you've never given up on us in spite of our unfaithfulness, Father. Oh, Father God, we thank you that you've never given up on us, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that we don't have to beg, Father. Oh, Father, we thank you, God. Forgive us for worshiping on the thrones of our heart, people, relationships, Father, jobs and opportunities, Father. We repent from thinking that we know it all, Father. We repent from being independent, Father. We want to be interdependent in your kingdom, Father. We thank you for the anointing of restoration that rests on this ministry right now, Father. Restore, hallelujah, restore the years that the locusts have eaten, Father. Oh, Father, I thank you that you have good things for us, I thank you, Father. I thank you. I thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. That you didn't respond, hallelujah, to the enemy, but you took authority. Hallelujah. And so because you took authority, you've given us authority. And so we take authority. Hallelujah. We thank you that we have peace in the midst of the storm. We thank you, God, that you've given us the ability, God, to, to tread on scorpions and serpents. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we just say thank you right now. Forgive us, God, for hiding our gifts and talents, God. Forgive us for being ashamed of the gospel. We repent for not sounding the alarm that you are coming back, Father. We repent for not telling and evangelizing as we should, God. We thank you for the ability for reconciliation, oh Lord. We don't take it lightly. We don't take it for granted, Father. We thank you that perfect love casts out all fear, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you because you love us. We don't have to fear. Hallelujah. We don't fear the enemy. We don't fear evil because the devil is defeated. Let you be exalted in our lives on today, Lord. Be exalted in our lives. Be exalted in our words. Be exalted in our actions. Be exalted in our deeds. We die to ourselves today. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that we are new creations and new creatures. Have your way with us. We surrender and submit, Father. We make our minds up today about you and who you said that we are, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that your hand is on each and every one of us right now, Father. I thank you, God, that we have the ability to lay hands and see the sick healed. We thank you, God, that we have the, we have the ability, ability to pray and see the dead rise. We thank you, God, for the blind eyes that will be opened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. And we worship you. We thank you, God. We don't despise the small beginnings. We thank you for the small beginnings. We thank you and we trust your process. Lord, you knew what you were doing, Father. You knew how much we could handle. And so, Father, we just say thank you and we give you glory and we give you honor for we are your vessels. Hallelujah. And we worship you, Father. We worship you. We worship you with our lives, Father. We thank you, God, that the blood of Jesus washes us and cleanses us white as snow. We thank you for what Jesus got up and did on that cross. And because he did, we can, Father. We thank you, God. We thank you for the depression and the anxiety that is leaving right now. We thank you right now. And we declare, hallelujah, that we are prosperous. We thank you for the debts that are being canceled right now. We thank you for the debts that are being forgiven right now, Father. Hallelujah. You've called us to be the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower, Father. So we thank you. And we come into alignment with your word. We thank you, God, that it's not too late. Hallelujah. And we put our hands to the plow today, Father. We thank you, God. 
We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We give you our yes, oh Lord. Hallelujah. We give you our yes. We give you our yes. Hallelujah. We give you our, our yes, Lord. Hallelujah, God. You are good. You are so good, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Yes. Okay. Whew. Okay. <sighs> Holy Ghost is definitely having his way. And so I'm going to try to make it through this. Mm. So we're going to Colossians. Let me just use um, <laughs> my phone for, for time's sake. We're going to go to Colossians chapter 3. Living the new life. Verse 1. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Where Christ sits in the place of honor. Set since you have been raised, because we were all once dead. So we are that miracle. We are all a miracle. We were once dead spiritually. We were once dead. And he called us to life. And so give him glory. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven. Meditate on them. Don't think about your bills. Don't think about your the sickness. Don't think, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow have enough worries of its own. But think about the thing of heaven, the things of heaven, not the things of this earth. For you died to this life. You are not here anymore. This is now Jesus has entered the chat. Jesus, now take your place. Not just in your heart, but in front of me. When people see me, let them see you, Lord. That is our prayer, that they would begin to literally see Jesus. That we would we, we suffer with him so that we can reign with him. But we understand that even in our suffering, it's a temporary suffering. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden in, hidden with Christ and God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all of his glory. So put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Lord, we crucify every sinful, ugly, nasty thing inside of us right now. We, act, we get rid of it, Lord. Any worry, any doubt, any hate, any, any unforgiveness, any 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 pride, any lust, anything, any any jealousy, any any evil thing that may be lurking, God. We 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 put it to death. We because you've given us authority. Anything have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Help us to stop worshiping the things of this world. Lord, help us to set our minds on the things of heaven that we might gain our spiritual sight again, that we might be able to see into other realms and dimensions, Lord, that we might not be so concerned with what's happening right now in this moment, but we'll be focused on what's happening in eternity, Father, because you are outside of time and you love us with an everlasting love. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things <laughs> when your life was still part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of anger. Lord, we get rid of anger right now. For everyone who's angry, for everyone who's felt rage, I am praying that you get rid of it on tonight, that you would literally give it and lay it at the feet of Jesus. God knows that it happened to you. He knows that your feelings are valid. He knows that 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 the people were wrong. And, 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 and but let him be your justice and your peace. Because he can do it better than you can. Holding on to such things is just like drinking poison and specking someone else to pass to die. Get rid of your anger that you even have towards yourself for not being what people said you should have been or for not being 
who you thought let, put, let, let aside every plan that you have for yourself because God has a best plan for you. Let go of your anger. Let go of your rage. Let go of the rage. Let go of the, 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 the spirit that you encountered when, when you experienced the, the, the suffering that Jesus experienced. It was good that you were afflicted. Get that in your spirit. Let go of the rage. Let go of the malicious behavior and the backbiting. Let go of it. Let go of it. Let go of, let, let go of it. Your words have power. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so let go of this malicious behavior. Let go of, of being a gatekeeper, of preventing people from getting opportunities and, and trying to, to hold people back. Let go of it. Let go of it. Because, there, because in the kingdom of God, there is more than enough. But I believe the word says, perfect love casts out all fear because a lot at the root of these things, we are fearful that, that we are not enough, that we are, the enemy has been whispering that, that, that some, all of these lies, it doesn't even matter. I'm not even about to give the enemy no airtime. He's a liar, but get rid of it. Get rid of the slander. You don't have to talk about, you can, you can tell your testimony with grace. You don't have to talk about it any longer. It has no power over you. You, you made it through. Pray for the ones that betray you. Pray for the ones that persecute you and show them love because Jesus is our only example. Don't let anybody tell you any different. We let go of even dirty language, Lord. We want to be our speech to be gracious. Don't lie to each other for you have stripped off your old sinful nature, Lord. We ask that you will forgive us right now for, for lying and any lies that we, even the lies the enemies told that we come into agree with, agreement with. We break every covenant contract and, 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 and agreement with every lie the enemy ever spoke about us, about other people, and about you, Father. We have stripped off our old sinful nature and all of its wicked, wicked deeds. We put on the new nature of Christ and we are renewed as we learn to know our creator and become like him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, he chose you to be holy, he chose you to be his, and he chose you to be his beloved. You must clothe yourself with tenderhearted mercy. Clothe yourself, put it on. As you get up, be prepared to show the mercy of God to the people that you come in contact with. We don't deserve what we have, and so we can give people what God has given us, mercy, because we deserve death. The judgment, wrath, and condemnation, but we give the mercy of God to those that we come into contact with. We give the kindness of God to those we come into contact with. He, he asks us to clothe ourselves in tender mercy and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience, making allowance for each other's faults. We don't, we don't fault find and forgive anyone who offends you. It doesn't matter how big or small the offense Forgive anybody who offends you, period. There are a lot of periods. We put commas where God puts periods. He said, period, okay? Forgive anyone who offends you, period. That's it. There's nothing else to it but to forgive, okay? Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love. And so we, 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 we clothe ourselves with the love of God tonight, not the love of man, not, not, not the brotherly love with the love of God. It's something that you can clothe yourself with, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. We must, as a body, as a kingdom, as a people, as a family, be in harmony, perfect harmony, that we can experience the perfect love and the perfect will and the perfect harmony of God if we would just agree on the word. It's that simple. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. 
Our hearts is our hearts are governed by peace. In our new life, our hearts are governed by peace. Peace is not the absence of conflict, but the presence of God. Our heart is governed by the presence of God. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and be thankful. And so we are living in peace, but we are also practicing gratitude because we've put on these things that come from above. Because we're supposed to not look like the world. The, the Bible tells us uh, to, to not be conformed, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And so we're praying for a mind renewal. We're praying for a transformation. We're praying for that wonderful change to happen. But guess what? We have to change. We have to. We have to pray for this every day. That the, that the that the growth and the change and the and the transformation doesn't stop. But we change and we 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 do this every day until Jesus comes back. We we wash ourselves with the Word. We trust in His 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 Word and we keep His commandments. We're keeping the commandments of God because. If we don't, we won't be have we, we, we won't have it, it. It literally the relationship is a covenant. It's a two way. It God's God's faithful if, even when we aren't. But many of us have to decide if we have relationship or we have religion. And if you have religion tonight, it's not too late to ask for and start a relationship. If you have a relationship and you've been disconnected, it's not too late to, to reconcile. It's the perfect time to, to come back to God. If you're a prodigal son or daughter, it, this is a perfect time to re reunite with your father, right? If if you are a mature saint walking in Christ, this is your opportunity to, to invite someone else and pray for someone else's salvation and pray for someone else to, re to re the restoration of their relationship with Christ. There is always something to do and work to be done. There's always a deeper level of intimacy we can get and and we should be searching for that that hole that we have that he created us with a void on purpose and some of us have bigger voids than others but that just means it's more of a space for god to fill and god wants to fill the space he doesn't want us to focus on what we lack but focus on the one who can fill that because he created us with voids on purpose he 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 broke us to bless us just as Jesus was broken to be and, 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 and given out. When I think about this topic um, and I think about uh, the, the, the word love, I know that perfect love uh, casts out all fear. And, and when I think about his perfect love casting out all fear, and I'm actually about to go to it um, because I, I think that we need to um first john and i love john i love first john i love john i'm just really um gonna go here right now first john we're going to go, I think, oh, to chapter four, actually. Give me a moment. Hmm. First John. Okay. Let's start at verse um, 16. Actually, I haven't rushed all night, and I can close on this one. I'm going to read this whole thing. I'm going to read 7 through 21. Um, one of the things God has been working on me with is not rushing through the scripture and trying to just give sound bites of his word, but reading it and hoping that people are engaging. But really, I'm just trying to be obedient. So whether, however it happens, I know God is going to handle this. Um, knowing God through love. Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. 
God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and we testify that the father has sent his son as the world's savior. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God remains in him and he in God. And we have come to know and believe that the love of, to, to believe the love that God has for us. God is love and the one who remains in love in God and God remains in him. In this, love is made complete with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as is he, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because, love, because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears is not complete in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and yet hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. For the person who does, who does not love his brother or sister, whom he, whom he cannot, whom he can see, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And we have this command from him. The one who loves God must also love his brother and sister. I want to end with this. Perfect love casts out fear. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. And so my personal story is that I've had a notion um, that there is this, I, I mean, I, I know that there's suffering attached to my calling, right? And my anointing. And so sometimes that keeps me running from the fire of God, right? I am now confronting this lie as I've stepped more and more into who God has said that I am and who he's calling me to be in this earth. And as I'm just trying to live each day, like it's my last, I'm confronting the lie that walking with God means being beat up by the enemy or being punished. Like this, this, this fear that I have, this irrational fear, a seed must have been planted. And I, I don't, I don't, know where along the way that I got this idea but but a lot of times even how we discipline our children and how the world um capitalism I mean if we just look at our nation our nation um there's capital punishment you know what I mean there's still some 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 crimes that can be punishable by death there are um you know people punishment is how we deal with crime right um um I think that being kingdom and being counterculture is to understand that God is not a punisher, but God ch chastens though he loves. He disciplines us and his love and his discipline is always for our benefit. Punishment has nothing to do with that. Punishment is trying to, to make you pay for what, like giving you kind of like what you deserve technically, right? Um, but God doesn't give us what we deserve. In fact, he gives us more than we can handle. He gives us so much that it's, it's, it's important for us to share it with others. And it, and, it, and his love is so great that, that it, it towers over us. It, it washes over us. It wakes us up in the morning. You know what I mean? It, 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 it makes our blood flow. Like God's love is, is all over us. And sometimes 
my anxiety or it, it, it used to get the best of me. And so I've been trying to figure out this last piece of anxiety, like what to do with it and not what to do with it, but like how to overcome this because I'm kind of like tired of it. But I made a statement today that I'm actually tired of running from the enemy. And anxiety puts me on the run. It puts me on the run from God and people and purpose and right, it runs me right into the devil. You understand? It runs me right into like your anxiety and your depression. It's, it, it, it takes you away from God. It takes you to your own. It leaves you defenseless or it leaves you in your own care. Like you, it makes you think that you are isolated from everybody and or that you need to isolate for safety. Um, and so perfect love driving out fear for me, the more that I receive God's love, the, 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 the more the fear subsides. But when I think about God's love being perfect and complete, I recognize that a part of me, I got to step into it knowing God's got, me. or I'll never experience this perfect love because I'm waiting for something to happen that's already happened. Jesus already came. Some of us are waiting for something that's already happened. And you need to ask yourself today, are you waiting for Jesus? <laughs> because he already came the first time. Now, we are the bride of Christ, and so we need to be preparing for him to come back. We're all John the Baptist is in a way where we are trying to prepare the people for Jesus to come back. We are preparing them. We are, we are spreading the gospel, spreading the good news, and we are encouraging the body to, to, of believers to repent. Um, we, are, we are proclaiming victory over the enemy. We are walking in victory. We are um, not understanding that we don't wrestle against flesh and, flesh and blood. We're not warring like the, like the world is. We're not warring like the world. We're not warring like the world. We, our, our weapons are not, our, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We have spiritual warfare that we need to be practicing because in doing so, we give our spirit man the, the permission to take the lead and, 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 and now we can walk in the spirit. And I think that if you are trying to walk in the spirit, but not doing spiritual warfare, you're doing it all wrong. We must literally put on the full armor and we must remember that the entire gospel is about love. This entire book, even from God's commandments, where it seems like a list of rules. And some of us are, 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 are have problems with authority because people have abused their authority in our lives. But God is not like man and he is the one who can redeem. So you definitely, if you have a problem, these are the things that you need to give to him and lay at his feet because he can use that, right? He wants you to love again. He wants you to trust again. He wants you to come out of hiding. I often seen in the, in the and I know for anybody who's read the Old Testament that the prophets are always on the run. And I'm like, why are the prophets always on the run? They're going into caves. They're going like the, they're running into whale's bellies and things of like, what is going on? But I understand in a sense because they're wrestling not against flesh and blood. They're not wrestling against flesh and blood. People are trying to figure out why are they on the run? It's because the enemy is chasing them down. But, but, but now we have Jesus who has a finished work. They were waiting on Jesus in the Old Testament. We have Jesus now. We, I mean, we have the Holy Spirit waiting on Jesus to return, but we have the spirit of the living God in us. And as we come together, the word without, the, the, uh, what is it? Honesty without compassion is brutality. We, 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 don't, we don't need fire and brimstone, brimstone, nor do we need comfortable Christianity, right? We just need the love of God. Because it, it, he will remind you that he's your deliverer, which means he don't have to say you was you was a slave before I met you. He tells you who he is, which is a reminder of what you like. It, 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 he's gracious. His words are laced. And so he even teaches us how to speak to one another. He teaches us how to fellowship. The Bible has everything that we need. It is a rich book. It is a rich text. And as we are running and reading other books and listening to podcasts, I believe that this is a call to just get in our word. Like before I could even teach tonight, I just was like, I had to read the entire book of Hosea. And I was reading this and I was looking at the things that God was saying. And I just imagined his heart after the people that he has chosen 
for so long have rejected him, have worshiped other gods, have um, been afraid of, been afraid of him when he's just trying to love them and talk to them and commune with him. And, and now we have the opportunity. We, we don't have to go through prophets and priests, but we, Jesus is our high priest. We can go to God in the name of Jesus and he will hear our prayers. If we humble ourselves, we can come to him and then we can commune with him and we can, we can build intimacy with him and he can teach us and show us and, 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 and we can begin to embody the fruits of the spirit. As we read these things, we will be have the language and vocabulary we need to identify and, and, and grow in discernment as we grow in love, as we grow in the prophetic, as we, as we grow in our understanding and evangelism, as we grow in the word and knowledge, we grow in wisdom. We must always also grow in love. And so as I pray tonight, I pray, God, that your perfect love would clothe us on tonight. I pray that we will go to sleep and that we would sleep a peaceful sleep, God, that you would wrap your loving arms around us. For some of us who are coming back to you, Lord, I pray that that they would feel your warm embrace and that they would be surrounded by people who are welcoming them. Let them hear the kingdom and let them hear the people of, of God literally shouting and, and praising and worship, worshiping and rejoicing because you are a God who leaves the 99 to go after the one. And so we thank you, God, that you are going after those whom, 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 whom you've lost and those whom you need to redeem and those who you need to heal. We thank you, God, that you are a compassionate and loving God. We thank you that you've called us to be a compassionate and loving people. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for restoring our relationship, Jesus. We thank you for restoring the breach that sin tries to create a distance. We thank you, God. Your word says no flesh shall glory in our presence. Teach us, Lord, each day to die daily so that we might glory with you, God. That we might not love the things of this world, but that we might lose our lives for Christ so that we can find our true lives in you, Father. We want to we want to experience that that joy. We want to experience that peace. We want to experience all the heavenly things that you've talked about in this word. We want to carry that with us and we want to share that with the world. We want to share the good news that Jesus lives, that he reigns and that he's coming back. So Father, we just say thank you that Jesus lives. We thank you that Jesus reigns. We thank you that Jesus is coming back. We thank you, God, that you've opened up our mouths, opened up our eyes, and opened up our ears. We thank you for healing us. We thank you for redeeming us. We thank you for setting us free. We thank you that you loved us before the foundations of this world. We thank you, God, that your love is an everlasting love. We thank you because your faithfulness is great. Oh, Father, we thank you that you love us beyond our faults, God, even when we are unfaithful, even when we have sinned and sinned so much against you, Father, even when we are hiding from us, hiding from you, Father, you come looking for us. Even when we are, we are, we are going the long way, God, you just, you're just patient. We thank you, God, that, that, that when we deserve to be striped, that you're just gentle. We, 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 we thank you, God, that as we brace ourselves for, for, for this, this, this strike that you just, that you give us a hug and a warm embrace, God. We thank you, God, that you are retraining our nerves, nervous systems to receive love. We thank you, God, that you are healing. You are healing. We thank you, God, that you are moving. We thank you, God, that you are making ways, God, that you won't leave us to be begging, Father. We thank you that you are our provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, that we don't have to beg, Father, no matter what it looks like. We trust in you. We trust in you. We thank you for the rams that you left in the bush, Father. We thank you that you don't require us to sacrifice, God. We thank you, God, that you've been with us in the fire and the storms, Father. Oh, Father God, we thank you for the passion that burns for us, Father. We want to burn for you on tonight. Set us ablaze, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Like fire that shot up in our bones, O oh Father. Like Jer the prophet Jeremiah said. Oh, Father, we just say thank you this evening for your love that you poured out so lavishly, Father. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. That you've given us faith to move mountains. Each of us has been given a measure of faith. And so right now, God, we speak to every mountain in our lives, God, and we tell them to move it with the authority of Jesus Christ. 
We thank you, God, that you called us to live and live more abundantly. We thank you, God, for your abundance. We thank you for your prosperity. We thank you for the fullness of your grace, O oh Lord. We thank you, hallelujah, that you rest, rule, and abide in our homes. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. And we speak as for me and in my house, we will serve the Lord. In each one of our homes, we dedicate our homes back to you. We dedicate our jobs back to you. We serve you with everything that we have. Lord, make us instruments of your peace, oh Lord. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. We want to be like Jesus, Father. You, We understand, God, that you've called us out of a dry place and out of a comfortable place. You called us from, from dry bones and you've called us to live. We thank you, God, and we testify of your goodness that we were once dead, dead, but now we live again. We were once dead in our sin, but now we live again. We thank you, God, and we worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, God, and we have that we have communion and fellowship with the saints who have came before us. We thank you, God, that you are building your church upon us, O oh Lord. We thank you, God, that you are revealing yourself to us more and more each day, O oh Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, that your hand is on our lives. We thank you, God, that you're washing us and cleansing us, Father. We thank you that you never get tired of it, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. But you delight in showing mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, let us understand that you take the light, Lord. We meditate on your word day and night, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. And I worship you and I praise you for every person. I, I thank you for HCN. I thank you for every minister and every family represented on tonight, God. I ask that you would bless them and enlarge their territories, God. Fill them. Fill them, Father, with your love, God. Let them love like you, God. Let us become a people who really pray for our enemies and bless those that curse us. Hallelujah. Let us wash the feet of feet of our of, 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 of our enemies and of our friends and of our family. Let us let us show love to everyone around us and let your love lead us to the cross, not fear. Let, let us not let us put aside the fearful ideas and the punishment that the world has showed us father because you are not a god who punishes you 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 promised to never flood the world again you've promised to never pour your wrath out on us and so we thank you we receive the promises we receive the promises on tonight we enter into the land of promises god we thank you that we enter into this land we thank you that we enter into this land of inheritance god full of wealth, full of riches, full of glory. We thank you, God, no matter what's going on in our household, no matter what's going on, Father, in our circumstances, we speak life and we take authority and we walk with power. We become like little children and we enter into your kingdom. We enter into your gates with just saying, thank you, Daddy, Father. We thank you, Abba, Father. We thank you, O Lord, our God. We thank you. We, your bride, thank you. We thank you and we, we just, we, we repent for not being all that we should. But Father, we just say thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. We thank you, God, that you are collecting our tears. We thank you, God, that you hear every prayer and you know every hair on our heads. We thank you that you love us so much. We thank you, God, and we worship you. We worship you, Father. We worship you, O Lord, in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Father, that you are the lifter of our heads. We come to you right now, and we ask that you would help us to love like Jesus. We also, Father, ask that you would help us to receive your love. For those of us who have problems receiving tonight, let it be our last night having an issue receiving. Work on our hearts. Work on our minds. As we as, as we come into agreement, you say whatever two of us agree here on earth, God, that it shall be done in heaven. And so we agree tonight, Father. We agree tonight that your word is going to go forth, Father. We agree. We agree with your word. We agree with your covenant. And we just say thank you. We thank you for our children. 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 <laughs> Oh, Father, we thank you for our children. We thank you for our families. Father, 
We thank you for our first ministry, which is our home. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We love you and we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We pray tonight that if there's anyone that needs to be saved, that they, they may be giving their life to you tonight, Father. We thank you for their souls. We thank you and we praise you for the prodigal children that are coming back. We thank you, Lord. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. Like Jesus, when he was in the temple, that we came to be about our father's business tonight, Father. We trust God that you are taking care of every need. We love you. We honor you, Father. And we just praise your name. We cannot praise you enough. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you guys for staying with me. And I look forward to seeing you all on Sunday. I pray that you receive this word in love and with love.